15th was Sunday, 16th, 17th, 18th, September 18th today, I guess. Yeah, September 18th. Anyways, yeah, uh, September 18th, which is Wednesday. It's uh, a little after 6, so early evening, and uh, another warm, dry day, another great weather. Uh, got I had to work inside mostly today. I was doing Eastern Ontario satellite stuff. Things of that. I was doing editing and uploading and uh, trying to get some of this Sable Beach uh, stuff edited, you know, get caught up in all that because, like, I'm really behind. Anyway, uh, so yeah, where we were, I was working on that. And uh, I uh, finally kind of got, I think I've got a handle on my, I don't want to say immigration papers, but on my permanent residency card, because you need to carry those uh, if I'm going to go visit the United States and I want to come back, even though I've been here like 50 years or more and all the rest of it. And uh, I have all the ID and I collect the CPP pension and you know, all this stuff. So, I mean, I'm definitely need, I'm definitely supposed to be here. Anyway, but you got to have that card. But I've been through the biggest circle jerk ever. You call Immigration Canada, no one can help for immigration matters. Imagine that. Okay. Then you call immigration lawyers. Every single one of them were from Toronto, very heavily accented East Indian. No problem with East Indian folks, not a problem at all. But if I can't understand who I'm talking to, well, it doesn't do me much good to do that. But one fella that was, uh, Rajinder somebody or another, um, he just immediately told, oh, well, I can't help you, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I barely explained myself and I'm like, whatever. And I hung up on him. So I ended up calling the legal clinic, thinking, okay, maybe I can talk to one of their lawyers. Uh, three days later, lawyer called back. Nope, can't help. Uh, but she suggested my social worker. And I'm like, oh, yes, I do have one of those, the one that's helping me with my mother and, you know, my PTSD and stuff. I, I don't see her regular. I just call her now. Like, I'm just supposed to call her whenever, you know, I feel like I have a need to go in and yap and whatever. So anyways, uh, I got a hold of Lisa and uh, Dr. Mayer. And uh, she's going to see me Monday at uh, two o'clock. So hopefully she can help me with this uh, with this paperwork because uh, wow, man, no one no one wants to help. I mean, and no one. I mean, it's just unbelievable. I reached out to a lawyer that had taken care of some business for me a few years ago. She never got back to me. Um, so wow. Anyways, uh, I'm trying my best. If I want to go visit down there, I'm going to need to have paperwork. And, uh, you know, really every Canadian or every, you know, permanent resident like me uh, or visitor or whatever should have paperwork. I don't understand the, why Immigration Canada, the people that are in charge of that shit, you can't go to their offices anymore. Well, that was like COVID when that happened. Well, we're long past COVID. So I don't know what the deal is with these people. Must be bubble people working there because... I mean, we should be able to go in and visit one of our government offices that we pay for, you know, like, wow, my taxes, your taxes, everybody in Canada's taxes, and we're very highly taxed, and I can't walk into a Canadian government office, especially one to do with immigration. Okay, so there we go. I've said my piece about that. So anyway, I'm going to talk to my social worker. If she can't do anything, then I'm going to actually reach out to one of these news organizations and say, listen, here I am, a permanent resident. You people are all freaking out about immigration and terrorists and all the rest of it. Yet somebody that's been here 50 years can't get his paperwork like he's supposed to. So he can go back and forth across the border with no issues. Okay. I don't want to get stuck down there because that's my citizenship is down there. And if they don't let me back across, I have an 82 year old mother here that would be very, you know, fucked up if I wasn't able to, you know, come back. So amongst other things. I'd be fucked up. Never, you know, both of us. So, anywho, we'll see what transpires on uh, on Monday with uh, Lisa. Um, end of the month, next week, uh, same day, Monday. I've got a a new worker coming over. Girl from Smith's Falls, I think she's from. Ooh, I can't remember. Anyway, she got two years construction experience. She's been doing her own work, stuff like that. So um, I told her I'm just going to get her to do, do the basic stuff uh, and I'm going to keep the complicated stuff. Not anything against her, just that stuff is for true. I save that stuff for him because, uh, you know, it's uh, I, uh, I want him to be doing the, the complicated stuff. So he's my friend, first of all. Um, he's been really, really busy with this one job, as I've mentioned before, up on Snow Road near Umpa. 
and uh, I don't want him walking away from that. Obviously, he wouldn't, but I mean, I don't want him to take time from that uh, because that's a long-term job that he got into there, so he's making good money. It's a good place to work. I guess the lady's really nice. So anyways, uh, so I get him when I can get him. So he's going to show up, I think, not this Saturday, but the Saturday after, I think he said. And he's going to do some dump runs. And uh, um, hopefully by then I'll have the, uh, I'll have, uh, her name is Corinne. I'm going to have her dig the little trench uh, from the, uh, from the open pipe in the back uh, out to the gray water thing. So it's pretty much all prepared. I'll have her rake that entire area and it'll be ready for True to come in and do his plumbing and then we'll rebury everything and that'll be, uh, that'll be one job out of the way. So hopefully that works out. The other thing I'm going to have her work on is the, uh, oh, by the way, this is coffee with me, Lad from the Woods, Vlog, coffee Vlog with Lad from the Woods, whatever. Anyway, if you can hear the talking in the background, that's Jimmy Dore's show. I put him on and then I realized, you know what, I feel like doing a show. It's cooled off a bit. It's quiet and uh, I'm due for, you know, a puff. Anyways, one of the gifts, some of the gifts that I got from Luke were these pens I've mentioned before. So anyways, I've got this one here. This one is, it's, a, it's an Indica Series 4. 1.1 gram mint chip ice cream, which strangely enough is one of my favorite ice creams when I was a kid. It still is. I just haven't had it in ages. My mother's favorite ice cream, I think of all time. She used to be anyway. Um, she doesn't eat my ice cream anymore, but anyway, uh, I haven't figured out how to open the box. <laughs> oh, I think it's here that no, I thought I, oh, wait a minute. I'm not supposed to do that. Uh, Luke showed me how to open it. I forgot. It's a, a flip top thing. I was trying to pry it loose and it's like, no, you don't do it that way. It's, yeah, see, that's this. It's got like a little magnet. So now the one thing I don't know is whether it's already charged. Now this is going to be, I don't know. How am I going to get that out of there? That looks pretty hard to get out of there. I don't want to break the damn thing getting it out. Wow. Oh, there we go. I just pushed the one end and it come flying out. Okay, well, let's see what happens. Otherwise, I probably have to charge it. I, I can't see that they'd come charged. or anything instructions that say anything on that? Disposable, rechargeable, 98% diamond infused distillate made by Six Nations. Proud me, proudly made with BB tank. Don't know what that means. Um, underage, 21 and over. Um... Well, that's interesting because I think it's 18, but on the on the reserve, they're sticking to 21, maybe. I don't know. Keep right side up and in a cool place. If not, this could lead to a defective bait pen. Okay, so all this time it's been laying like this, but it says to keep it up. Okay, well, anyway, let's see what happens. The white light comes on, then there's power. Oh, shit, that does taste like mint ice cream. Holy crap. Oh, is that a nice taste? So this one's the one that ran out, and that tasted like uh, the candy Smarties. Not the chocolate Smarties that we call up here, but the candy Smarties. So there you go. Uh, <coughs> thanks, Luke. I definitely got to get some more of those. Um, I don't know if Luke gets a discount or something, but I'll check with him. If it does, I'll just send him the money down. So... Um, so yeah, uh, I think we're going to take a walk out. I've got to turn the water sprinkler on. I'm going to turn it on for an hour for the, uh, for the plants in the back. We're not going to say anything about the plants. We'll just say plants and maybe YouTube will stay off my case. Hang on. Just going to go to the water pump. So you guys have seen this before. This is... Uh, Corinne is going to get this all cleaned up since Jeff has kind of flaked out on me so anyways oh you can hear Jimmy loud there so I got the main pipe off here the other day um, 
the incoming pipe's going to be need to be redone as well. There's that whole situation's got to be looked at. So I'm going to get true to take a very serious look at it. Right now the water's dumping in underneath the um, the trailer, which is not good. Um, and I'm trying to do laundry. I can't stop everything I'm doing, but I got no way to run that anywhere else. So anyway, let's uh, yes yeah, bend over here. That's right. I got to get a new light for this. Okay, let's take a walk. I just want to make sure it's working and doing what it's supposed to. In case some bear came and... No, I'm just kidding. Bear. <laughs> um, anyway, I just want to check on it. I'm just going to run it for an hour tonight. Um, yeah, I'm not even going to bother with the ATV here. I wonder if I can take my coffee with me. Hold this in one hand. Is that possible? Uh, let's switch you guys back around. Ooh. Turn that up more. Oh, that's really long. I can barely hold that. <laughs> oh, I see. The longer you go, too, it's easier to see the thing, or... I don't know. Anyway. Okay, that's good enough. So, all right, let's take a walk out back with the coffee. See if I catch a little zzz off that other thing. So... Um, boat sitting here looking all pretty. It's got some nerve, this boat looking so pretty like this with that floor. Hang on. Every time I walk by it and I'm going, Jesus, just a little bit of paint makes this huge improvement how it looks. It needs a second coat. I've still got uh, that gallon, so I may get her to do that. Uh, we'll see. Um, her rate's a good rate. All right, let's walk out. Actually, why don't I do that that director thing? Hang on a minute. Can I do that on the fly? I guess not. Hang on. There, director thing. Like the thing I use for the road vlogs. Anyway, there we go. So we can see the bush and you can still see me. And I'll try and look at the camera. Mosquito just grabbed me. I guess all the wild raspberries are... Oh yeah, they're long gone. <laughs> anyway, last year, I can't remember who visited with their little kids, but uh, they came here and their little ones couldn't believe that they could get something like candy off a, off a plant. And they're like, it's like candy. I'm like, no, it's a fruit. It's a very good fruit for you. So they were like, oh, four years old, five years old. <laughs> I mean, you know. They probably had no idea what I was talking about. But anyways, they enjoyed the wild raspberries. We used to as kids. I still pick the odd one when I'm walking by. Throw them in my mouth for a little taste. I have yet to get a hold of uh, the boys about hunting here this year. See, there's one of the feeders there. The other one's there with the... Uh, well, I don't even know if that's stable. That's Randy's uh, hunt stand there. I should go check that. I see people are now charging $500 for the hunt season per person to come hunt on their land. This is out near a place I used to live near, actually, Kempville. Well, there we go. Yeah, she's running. Um, I don't know if I want people tromping around here. Like I say, I usually just call what friends I know that are hunting. And sometimes, like Randy, doesn't really have a hunt place to go. So, I mean, he knows he's welcome here. So it's not like I got it. Oh, that plant's dying. Even though she got fed and she got water, she's dying. Yeah. Might be the end of that one in the front there. Oh, that's perfect. I didn't even turn it on full blast. So yeah, the back ones are good. And the main ones, make sure they get them in the back there. Going all the way to the back. I just got to see the leaves tremble. Yep. So they're all getting water. Boy, that one back over there is purple already, the buds. So, yeah, today's Wednesday. Uh, so tomorrow I won't be doing laundry. I just did one load today. That'll be enough. I'll do this. Tomorrow I'll fill that up half full. Let that water warm up and not be too hard on the uh, on the uh, 
pump, well, well, and uh, then I'll fill it up. Tomorrow's Thursday, so I'll fill that up Thursday, and then Saturday I'll fill the 60 gallon, like, you know, the other 30 gallons up to the top, and then uh, I can do a mixture of the, the butt explosion, and then I'll feed that to them Sunday, and then they can have some watering next week, so... I think the temperature, there was a chance of rain on Sunday, but it doesn't look that good for rain. But uh, temperatures are going to drop off just a bit starting next week. Instead of being like 25, 26 Celsius, it's going to be hovering around 20, 21. You know, that 10. It says 13 Celsius at night, which means closer probably to 10 here. So anyways, nothing uh, I'm too worried about plant-wise, obviously. But uh, anyway, at least uh, I've made some headway with them. I mean, I really did make a mess of them this year, but no way was I camp canceling my Saba Beach trip. I probably should have had Jeff water them and uh, even feed them. I could have set it up. I said I was going to do it, and then I didn't do it. So my own fault. Anyway, that's about as much as I can say about that without having to put it on Rumble. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, there's really nothing else to talk about. I've got the tent sitting up here. I may, uh, she's not here till Monday. So I'm thinking I might just set up the tent. I fed this lady too and filled up her dirt. And uh, I gave it a rake yesterday. I didn't bother filming. It was a last minute thing. Anyways, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw the tent up until she comes on Monday. And uh, then uh, I've made a decision. We're going to take all this and put it in the garbage. And I'm going to use or have her use. There's a whole bunch of two by sixes by twelves here. I think they are. Anyway, I'm going to see. Um, yeah, there's only three of them. Are these sixteens or twelves? These might be sixteens. So each one would be eight feet. I got to. Well, she'll have to measure. I'll probably have to pick up a couple more. But I'm going to get her to build the platform good and solid with two by six, and uh, I'll get her to. I will put chipboard on top, but then we'll paint it. I'm going to buy some of that uh, paint I said I was going to buy, and uh, the latex, and we'll paint that up. I'll have her level it. It's going to stay right there, get it in its permanent spot, and that's where she'll stay. And then it'll be a nice platform over here, and uh, place to put the tent every year. Um, it may just end up staying there because I'm thinking for the small trips. I'm going to get a small tent Like I said up before I was going to make a small um, a Small like quick quick to load and go camping kit like I used to do So and then I'll save the big one for when I do a big trip. So there we are um, Six minutes the other one I think was about nine. So I think that's about it for me um, Oh, I got all the gas tanks organized with caps and everything. I finally matched everything. So there's all that. And this one here. Um, I still have yet to find caps. So they can still be breathing, you know. But I don't want the gas coming out. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do there yet. Um, maybe there's something we can create with a screw or something. That would probably be the easiest thing is just to put a little sheet metal screw in there or something and then take them off whenever I need to use them. But right now I've got 18 gallon, a possible 18 gallons of gas in that. That's a lot of gas. I may just stay with this and forget that gas buddy. Keep it as an emergency thing because there's room to put uh, one or two of the gas tanks like without the, using the gas buddy if I really wanted. But I mean there's nowhere I'm going to be going that I'm aware of, knock on wood or whatever the word is. Um, that I'm going to be going, then I'm going to need that much gas. I really won't. I mean, I could troll all day on Palmerston Lake with six gallons, you know, and it's a big lake. So, anyways, uh, we'll see. Um, I think I already talked about the, uh, the, the weed whipper. I haven't got to that. I got to go get gas, which I haven't done yet. I got my oil in from the, uh, from steel. This is like you put two of these for five liters, and that's uh, 25 to one. So I've got five, 10, 15 liters. That's three tanks of gas. I'll never use that much gas with that weed whipper probably in a year. I don't know. We'll see. I, uh, we'll see. 
So, um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, I keep saying that. I just don't know what else. There's really nothing else, man. Um, Luke is, uh, there's a crack in Luke's uh, exterior. I don't mean like a real crack. You know what I mean? Like, you know, he's not like, he, but I think he was saying that there's a possibility because he's itching to get out. He was saying he's actually itching. Hang on. When I talked to him the other day, he was kind of, or yeah, yesterday, he was kind of like I was saying, you know, I was looking at camp, different provincial parks and stuff like that. Like, you know, want to get out and about, do something, right? And uh, right there, then I asked him, I said, uh, any news on whether you're going to be six days a week or whatever? And uh, he says, oh, there might be something coming or uh, he says, I'm going to see. So anyways, uh, if he gets something more concrete, I, you know, he knows the offer's here to come here, which would cost him nothing, at least camp wise instead of us both going to a provincial park. Um, unless he wants to be around other people in the campground, which I would enjoy. Either way, I, I, I'll be okay. I won't be able to buy a new you know, small tent and all that. I'll just bring the one big tent and I won't bother with the cot. Oh, actually, you know what? I can bring the small cot. I won't. Actually, I'm probably going to get rid of that big cot. It's just, it's not that much better than my regular fold-up tiny cot. And it takes up a whole lot of room. And it's really meant to be as a rollaway bed because that's what it really is. And I should keep that maybe for the back because I might be able to get it to fit in the back if I want to go lay down on a regular bed. So the foam mattress with the regular, with the regular cot. So um, I've been having trouble tying up the foam mattress. And then I realized, why don't you just use a bungee cord, you idiot. You've got tons of these bungee cords. <laughs> so, yeah, I can pack up a quick kit uh, if he wants to do that. We are going to get to the uh, organizing one tote with everything I need just for, you know, a basic camp. You know, tent, mat foam mattress, a blanket. Um, I need to get a sleeping bag, something awful. Um, cook stove, you know, no Keurig, no toaster, any of that stuff. Just the basics. Um, I'll bring my little Italian coffee maker for coffee and that'll have to do. You know, those are those quick camp outs, you know. I got the one cooler I'll use anyways, the same one, and, you know, it'll be just the basics. Anyways, we'll see. Uh, I may or may not. I may even go without Luke. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. This month, not impossible. Uh, th this month, impossible. Anyways, uh, we're at 10 minutes. I'm going to end this. Just, just rattling on for nothing. And I've had my coffee with you guys. And I caught a little mm-mm off that. So, I think, because uh, I can't remember if the other one was an Indica or not. I don't think so. <sighs> Might need a charge, actually. Because I noticed with the other one, once I charged it, the, the clouds came like 10 times bigger. Now it's going to make me want to go buy a gallon of that ice cream, which would be a mistake. <laughs> Diabetes. Okay, everyone, let's call it. Um, yeah, so please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, what else? What else? Um, oh, yeah, if you want to donate to the cats or the website or anything else like that, website, you know, filming, channel, all that, uh, paypal.com slash lad from the woods or buymeacoffee.com slash lad from the woods. Um, what else? What else? Oh, well, then I guess that's it. Sign off, I guess. So be good to your fellow human, okay? There's a lot of crazy shit going on, and uh, we need to really pull up uh, here. I, things are headed in a really bad direction, and I, I don't even want to contemplate. Anyways, be good to your fellow human. Peace, long life, and live long and prosper. So, oh, okay, I'll say one last thing about that. Is uh, no matter what you think of Trump or Biden or any of them, there's no place for this. And I am definitely scared that uh, they're not going to let Trump uh, be, be president if he wins. Uh, this is not happening from just the odd idiot. This is something else. My cat's trying to come out here. Look, Goldie got out here the other day. Oh, no, no, that's not it. She's trying to get into the... Yeah, she's not pushing the door. She actually got out. But I had not uh, put the bungee cord to hold the screen door shut when I'm running the fan. Um, and she got out. It took me a good 20 minutes or more to get her back in. So I didn't give her shit or anything because that wouldn't do any good. Then I wouldn't be able to catch her next time. But anyway, she, there's a little cabinet there that's on the floor. And she pulls open the door and she'll do it about 20 times, driving me batty until she gets in there. Then she goes in there for like three minutes and then she comes out. 
first I thought, oh God, I hope she's not going for a piss or something. You know, I never thought that'd be a great place to put a litter box and just open the... Yeah, I never even thought about that. I wonder if I get both of them in there. Anyways, um, oh, probably wouldn't be high enough from the top. Anyways, um, yeah, she doesn't piss or shit in there or anything. I think she just goes and hides. Or I still think she's looking for her kittens, the ones that she had here, the last, you know, the last brood she had. Anyway, we're doing it again. So please like, share. Okay, I already said that. Be good to your fellow human. Zoink. Okay. Mint works. Hey, Luke. Um, let's start with, oh, peace, long life, and live long and prosper. See you, everybody. Bye.